Coming up, a remote-controlled control tower may be in your future and jumping out of a perfectly good helicopter. Going inside the Red Bull Air Races and curse you, Red Baron. AOPLI This Week begins in just a moment. From your first skyward glance, the dream of flight compelled you. And from your first glimpse of a Cirrus, you realized that dream had a name. Cirrus Aircraft. Go where you've never been before. Call it the Drone Tower. Hello everyone and welcome to AOPA Live This Week. I'm Melissa Rudinger. And I'm Warren Morningstar. Tom Haynes is on assignment this week. And more on that drone tower in just a moment. But first, a quick trip down to Washington. By the time you watch this, Paul Ryan is probably the Speaker of the House. So what does that mean for third-class medical reform? Well, Ryan is not a co-sponsor of the Pilots' Bill of Rights too, but he is from Wisconsin home to the Experimental Aircraft Association and AirVenture, so he undoubtedly recognizes the importance of general aviation to his state and the nation. And as Speaker, he can determine what bills come to the floor for a vote. We now have 146 co-sponsors in the House and 68 in the Senate, so if the bill ever gets to the floor for a vote, it will likely go through. But getting floor time is difficult, sort of like waiting for an ATC clearance on a low IFR day. And speaking of air traffic control, technology company Saab is working on getting air traffic control services into the non-towered fields. They are pioneering remote air traffic control, and I got a chance to see the technology in action. A stunning array of 14 HD monitors provide a glimpse into what could be the future of air traffic control. Saab Technologies just finished the first stage of testing on the nation's first remote air traffic control tower. Remote towers are much cheaper to build and to maintain than traditional towers. The remote tower works using cameras mounted on the top of the terminal. This gives controllers a clear 360 degree view of the field. Controllers can work at either the airport or from a remote location. The first tower is being tested at Leesburg Executive Airport in Virginia. In this case, the FAA is providing us with controllers from around the country who have been observing traffic uh, at Leesburg since August. And our objective is to assemble observations to go to the FAA safety panel and present a case that says this uh, technology is, is as safe and as reliable and as efficient as a brick and mortar tower. Looking at the monitors, controllers have many of the same tools they have in real towers. They can use binoculars or a pan-tilt zoom camera to look for traffic. And they can even shoot light gun signals. It's all controlled using a touchscreen. They can also use technology not available in a traditional tower. And so we can overlay radar data when available, provide a data block in the out-the-window picture so a controller can see an, in an arriving aircraft that might be 10 miles away. Saab has high hopes for the technology. After approval from the FAA, they plan to use the remote tower to make Leesburg a class Delta airport. I think the local community will really, the pilot community especially, will be very happy with the results they see here. I know I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to smooth operations out a lot, and I think that everybody's going to see a real improvement in the way things work. There are many options for what the technology could be used for in the future. I think we can provide services to air traffic uh, to airports that don't have air traffic control services. We could uh, provide a service from a tracon uh, where we could see a runway. We're shooting an ILS approach. We could see that airplane land and turn off. We could shoot the next ILS approach. I mean, it really, to us, it's just this fits right hand in glove into next gen, making it enhancing the safety and making it more efficient. The technology opens a lot of opportunities to general aviation airports like Leesburg. And so we think this is a good business tool, allowing better utilization of this airport, better utilization of national airspace, and better use of the business traveler's time. Pending FAA approval, Saab hopes to have Leesburg up and running as a towered field in the spring or summer of 2016. So Melissa, are these uh, remote control towers in use anyplace else right now? They are actually. Uh, so Sweden's had one for quite a while. There's some in development in Australia, and we actually are looking at Fort Collins as another U.S. Uh, location to do some testing. So it's a tested concept, and it's actually been proven in Sweden and, and is, is very uh, popular there. It sounds like it could be a way to save a little bit of money for air traffic control. Absolutely. It's a fraction of the cost. Okay. 
And here's another example of technology marching forward. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association, GAMA, has just added a new membership category, electric and hybrid propulsion aircraft. Gammon says that's to use their expertise to enable the growth and certification of electric and hybrid powered aircraft. And the FAA has just certified the Sandia SAI 340 Quattro. Quattro means four, of course, and the solid state device provides attitude, altitude, airspeed, and slip information. It can be installed as a standby instrument or under new FAA policy. You can use it to replace your old vacuum powered attitude indicator. The Quattro fits the standard three inch instrument hole. It has its own backup battery and it's yours for 3,600 bucks, not counting installation. But it's worth every penny if your A goes out to lunch in the soup. And here's something that might save your bacon and it won't cost you a penny. It's a new video series from the AOPA Air Safety Institute that focuses on practical weather flying. The first video takes a look at strategies for sorting through the chaff and pinpointing the information that really matters for your upcoming flight. The second explores the many resources available at the revamped Aviation Weather Center website. You can find both WeatherWise videos in the Safety and Education channel on AOPALive.org. Coming up after the break, jumping out of a perfectly good helicopter. And inside the Red Bull Air Races, literally. You're watching AOPA Live this week. It's been called the most sophisticated single-engine airplane ever, but to the people whose loved ones are alive today, it's called a lifesaver. The Cirrus Airframe Parachute System, only from Cirrus Aircraft. Welcome back. You're watching AOPA Live this week. Well, you know, if it's got some kind of wings, chances are Red Bull will have something to do with it. Last week over Northern California, 40 of the world's best wingsuit pilots jumped out of a helicopter for the Red Bull Aces competition. The goal was to pass as closely as possible through three slalom gates suspended from helicopters. Like skiers, the winner is the one who gets through all gates at the fastest speed. At this point, I think I'll say something about jumping out of a perfectly good helicopter. And speaking of Red Bull, the Red Bull Air Race Series pits the best pilots in the world against each other through a course of pylons. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop found out what goes into keeping them up. When you've got 14 airplanes flying up to 200 knots within inches of large inflatable pylons. The pylon itself is about 25 meters high. There's bound to be a few hits. But the not quite misses don't have to be major mishaps. It starts with a super lightweight fabric. This fabric only weighs about 40 grams per square meter. A normal piece of paper when you get a letter home, that's about 80 grams, so that's half the weight of a paper. The fabric is made into sections and put together with a plastic zipper. So what we do is we use this, put it in here, put it other, on the other side too. Zip it all the way and at the end we take this out again because we don't want any metal or anything inside. A computer controls the air pressure inside via a giant fan. When the race is on, extra air is pumped in so the fabric is tight. And when there's a hit... We go there, one car to repair it, we have one car as backup if we need some help. Uh, you can imagine this is very sketchy when we have wind, it's a 25 meter sail when it's deflated, so sometimes we just need some help, some backup from our friends to, just to hold it down. So when the pylon is hit by an airplane, we do not replace the whole pylon, we just replace the broken pieces from the top down. So in case it hits part three, we replace part one till three. As well, you can imagine our job during the race is something similar like a box stop in the Formula One, so we have to be really, really fast. And most impressively, the 16-member pylon crew broke into three teams can get a damaged pylon back in the air in as little as 90 seconds. So the race can keep going. In Las Vegas, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. Thanks, Paul. That's really impressive. The pylons have gone through several technical revisions over the years, and we will bring you the 2016 Red Bull Air Race schedule as soon as it's announced. Well, if you just can't get enough flying video, our friends over at The Aviators have just released Season 6. The series is available on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, and Vudu. 
The Aviators also airs weekly on many PBS stations, so as they say, check your local listings. And finally, the Red Baron may finally get it on November 6th. That's when the new Peanuts movie debuts, and there may be a dogfight or at least a flying dog house. Pilots will notice that the flying scenes will be pretty accurate. That's because Craig Schultz, son of Peanuts creator Charles Schultz, is a pilot, flight instructor, and steerman owner. And so I had the idea, and I contacted my son, who's a screenwriter who had done some films and sold a couple movies to uh, Warner Brothers and Steven Spielberg. And I said, hey, can you help me get this uh, stupid movie going? So we kind of brainstormed and uh, got him on board with his writing partner, Neil Uliano. And we created the draft for the movie and took it to Fox, and uh, Fox loved it. And watch for an Easter egg in the movie. If you look closely, you'll find an exact copy of Craig's P-40 in one scene. And you know, Al Marsh just wrote a story about the movie and everything that went into it. You can find it on uh, AOPA.org. It's really interesting because what's going on, what we see on the screen is supposedly what's going on in Snoopy's head. So, oh, I look forward to that. So it's kind of fun. Great. And that does it for us this week. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you here next Thursday for another edition of AOPA Live This Week.